Long before the reign of the two Alicorn sisters, there was a small village in the kingdom of Prance. A beautiful, intelligent, and slightly odd Alicorn named Sparkel lived in the village on her own. She was fascinated by the spells and history she found in books, and chose to spend her days reading rather than socialising. Unfortunately, this caused Sparkel to become introverted and awkward around other ponies. Though many ponies attempted to include her in daily village life, Sparkel's attention was always focused on her studies. Eventually, every pony left Sparkel alone to do as she pleased. Every pony, with the exception of Dashton. Dashton was the village's hero and most sought after stallion. He dominated the sky, breaking weather and speed records as if they were foals' play. He was handsome, strong, charismatic, and available. Every mare in the village dreamed of becoming his mare friend, but Dash Ton's sights were set on the one who didn't clamor for his attention, Sparkel. One afternoon, Dash Ton and his faithful assistant Scootaloo had just finished. Uh, hang on, did I read that right? Is it really just Scootaloo? Yeah, because in the other story, the short, stubby little human that followed the hunk circle around was called LeFou, so it's totally perfect. Scoot a loo and LeFou. <laughs> I love rhymes. But don't you usually change the name? Isn't that a little distracting? Well, why don't you try to come up with something better? Do you know how hard it was to make a pun out of Maud's name in the last one? How am I supposed to make something funny out of LeFou? It's in, like, France Canis or something. Okay, first of all, it's called French. Let's not start off the story by offending part of the world's population. How about we call her... Hmm... Scooteroo. Roo is French and can be used as a surname. <laughs> That's one of the silly nicknames Dashie and I use all the time. You know, like I'm Punkapoo, and then there's Yellow Quiet, White Perfect, Breakfast Cereal. What? I mean, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Whoa! That was amazing, Dashton! Dashton's faithful assistant Scooteroo called as Dashton landed with a resounding boom. He had instructed Scooteroo to time his cloud clearing, hoping once again to break his own speed record. How long? Dashton asked, picking the cloud debris from his wings mindlessly. Oh, you were amazing! As always! No pony can clear the sky like you can, Dashton. How long? Dashton said again impatiently. Scooteroo gulped nervously before replying, 10.3 seconds? What? Let me see that timer. Dashton growled, swiping the little device from Scooteroo's hoof. It's still record breaking. Yeah, maybe last year when I actually broke it. I promised my fans I'd break 10 seconds this year, and I will not disappoint them. Are you sure this thing is working? Look, it's him, Deston. Oh, isn't he dreamy? Three yellow pegasi with long, soft, pink manes called from a distance, crowding around Dashton and fawning over him. Scooteroo quickly moved away to avoid being trampled. Ladies, ladies, there's plenty of Dashton to go around. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm the best. I can't help it. I guess I was just born to be awesome. As his over-exuberant fans swarmed him, Dashton caught a glimpse of Sparkel from the corner of his eye. Sorry, Phillies. Got a dash. Dashton said with a wink, flying away and leaving three sad mares behind. Aww. There he goes again, hanging around that mare instead of us. She's pretty, but, um, she's... Kinda shy, don't you think? What's she got that we haven't got? Personality. Scooteroo muttered under his breath. Huh? huh? Nothing, nothing. Hey there. Couldn't help but notice you strolling along the street all alone. Figured you could use some company. Dashton said, cozying up to Spark Al as they walked down the street. <sighs> Hello, Dashton. You know, it's not very mare-like to walk around with those things all the time. You mean books? You do know that ponies are calling you an egghead, right? A, a what? Who, who calls me an egghead? <laughs> I do. Look, it's just not right for a mare who looks like you to be so booky and eggheady. 
You know, I don't think bookie and eggheady are words. And what do you mean a mare who looks like me? It's a compliment. It means you're too pretty to be burying your face in one of these all the time. You should come around town with me. I could show you some of my record-breaking trophies. Ugh, Deshton, there's no such thing as being too pretty or too ugly to be intelligent. Also, I happen to think the most appealing ponies are the ones who don't flaunt their accomplishments. Instead, they should let their work speak for itself. You do have some pretty great work. <laughs> what do you know of my work? Uh, duh. You're like the most powerful unicorn in print. Uh, technically, I'm an alicorn. Whatever. You raise the sun and the moon practically on your own. That's pretty impressive. And it's that kind of mare that I want on my right wing. Uh, you have dozens of other mares who would give anything to be your mare friend. Why me? Because you're a challenge. And I never back down from a challenge. Not to mention, underneath all that eggheadiness, you're a really pretty mare, you know. I am not an egghead. So I'm going to do you a big favor and take you out tonight. If you're seen around the village with me, that egghead thing will be a thing of the past. I... No, no, you don't have to say anything. I already know your answer. I'll be by at 7 o'clock to pick you up. There's no way you're not going to love what I have planned. Dashton said, zooming away. That, that, that's a double negative! Ugh. The thought of an evening spent with Dashton and all his braggery was too traumatizing for Spark L to fathom. She decided it would be a better idea to take her books and study somewhere far away where the Pegasus could not find her. There was only one place she could think of where the village ponies dared not venture. The Enchanted Forest. Spark L ignored the warnings and rumors that the forest was indeed cursed and dangerous, choosing to believe that a night with Dashton would be far worse. She wandered the narrow forest paths, looking for a clearing to study in peace. But hours passed, and Spark L conceded to the fact that she was indeed lost. To make matters worse, she finally understood why the forest was deemed enchanted, as the magic of her horn failed to produce any spells. Powerless, hungry, and exhausted, Spark L gave up the search for the path home and sought out a safe place to spend the cold night instead. When hope was dismal, Spark L spied an old iron gate with a path that led to a mighty castle hidden in the heart of the forest. She was relieved, pushed open the gate, and ran up the front steps of the castle. Uh, hello? Is, is any pony there? Please, I only seek shelter for the night. Thank you. I, I don't mean to be a bother. I- Spark L started, but paused when she realized she was all alone. The only indication that some pony had unlocked the door for her was the light of a strange-looking candle with a pony face carved into the candlestick. Sparkel tilted her head and reached her hoof out towards it when the candle began to move. Well, hi there! It's been a long time since I've seen your kind around here. The candlestick said, talking from the pony face. Sparkel screamed in surprise and <coughs> leapt up into the air before crashing back down to the ground on her flank. <laughs> Way to go, Flame Witch! Not two seconds into the castle and you've already given our guest PTSD. Spark L sharply turned her head around to see an old gramophone playing a record. The voice she heard had come from the gramophone horn, but as the record spun, no other sound could be heard. Spark L's ears perked up when she heard the candlestick hopping over to the gramophone on its own, smiling as if nothing were amiss. Who... who are you? I think the better question is, what are we? We haven't been a who in a long time. But we're the staff of the castle. Cursed along with its master until our impending doom traps us as inanimate objects forever. But you're not interested in all that. Follow me. You must be freezing. Take me with you. This is going to end up a disaster and I absolutely want to watch it happen. Flame Witch rolled his eyes and lifted the needle on the record with one of his candles. He picked up the record itself and hopped along one of the castle hallways. You coming? He called to Spark L. She nodded and walked cautiously after him. Eventually, the candle paused in front of a small study where a comfortable chair waited in front of a fireplace. Hang on, let me get that for you. The candle said enthusiastically, 
using the flame on one of his candles to ignite the fireplace. He then placed the record onto a second gramophone in the corner of the room, adjusting the needle accordingly. Make way! Make way! I simply must see this for myself! The third voice called, followed by the sound of china clinking down the hallway. Soon after, a decorated little teapot entered the room, and it too had a strange pony-like face that beamed excitedly at the sight of Sparkel. It's true! There is a pony in the castle! Oh, how terribly exciting! Are you here to break our curse? A small voice called from behind the teapot. It was a little cup that appeared to be another piece of the tea set. The pair of them hopped onto a side table to get a better look at the pony guest. Sparkel watched them in fascinated silence. Are you cursed too? Sweetener Belle, it's impolite to ask ponies if they're cursed. But she's an alicorn. See, she even looks like a Mary Sue. Oh, <laughs> do forgive my little sister. She has quite the imagination since being turned into talking china. My name is Rarity Pot. Don't be frightened, darling. We won't hurt you. Uh, afraid? I I'm not afraid. I'm... I'm... Fascinated! How did you all get cursed like this? Who are you? What's this castle doing in the middle of the forest? And why isn't it in any of our history books? What in Toronation is going on in here? Another new object said from the doorway. It was a clock, decorated with apple accents and a swinging apple pendulum. What's she doing here? Eh, flame which let her in. <laughs> and you just let him? You're supposed to guard the door. It was exciting and I'm bored. What'd you expect? Well, she's the first pony we've seen in decades, and she looked like she needed help. Besides, now we have a reason to celebrate. She's come to break the curse. Sparkel opened her mouth to respond, but hesitated when she heard mighty hoofsteps approaching from down the hallway. The objects in the room turned their attention to the doorway, smiling, with the exception of Sparkel and Apple Clock. A mysterious pony approached, staying hidden in shadow, with the exception of his bright green glowing eyes. Who are you? What are you doing in my castle? I'm Sparkel. I got lost in the woods and just needed a warm place to stay the night. I see. The pony said simply, taking a step inside the room and into the light. The sight Sparkel beheld was... Um, was too fascinating and terrifying for her to comprehend. The pony before her was not an inanimate object like the other castle members she had seen. He was a tall, black-coated alicorn with piercing red stripes on his coat and mane. Oh no! At atop his head were three horns, two on either side of his head along with a broken unicorn horn. He had cleft hooves and what appeared to be an orange flame pattern on his legs under his red stripes. His eyes glowed with a trail of purple smoke around them, and he had large, multicolored bat wings. Sweet Celestia! All right, Pinky, what is going on? What do you mean, what is going on? Look at him! He's... he's... An alicorn representing the beast. No, I mean, yes, but look at him! He's an abomination! Why does he have all those multicolored bat wings and a weird celestial-looking necklace thing with the heart-shaped gemstone? What crazy twisted mind could create such a thing? Well, these are pinky tails, aren't they? So, didn't you come up with his design? Me? You think I had something to do with this, th this whatever he is? It wasn't me. I thought he was going to be a manticore or something. But this? Oh, sweet Celestia, hide me! Are you afraid of him, Pinky? Of course I'm afraid of him! Why else do you think I gave my part to cheese sandwich? I was supposed to be the candle, but, but I just can't do it! He's gonna shoot rainbow sparkle flame power at me and I'll be sent to another dimension! I just know it! Do you know how much power bronies give terrible OCs? They're undefeatable! Pinky will stay far, far away from him! Uh, you're overreacting. I can't hear you! I'm far, far away! Please turn the page. <sighs> Fine. Oh, come on! He's on this page, too! There's no escape, I tell you! No escape! Don't be afraid, darling. This is our beloved prince, and the victim of a cruel and unjustifiable curse. No, not a prince. I am a beast. I don't deserve your praise, Madam Teapot. Were you cursed to be this way? No. 
My appearance did not change when I was cursed, but I fear that my curse may be the worst of them all. I am merely not permitted to leave my own castle and spread my vast and unending magical power with the pony world. You see, before I was cursed, I had studied every book on magic that had ever been written, and I had discovered a way to cure cancer and hunger and create everlasting world peace. Oh, brother. But now, I am stuck here, and my magic is powerless against this curse. I am doomed to never be able to help other ponies and be their prince. Oh, that's terrible. Every book on magic, you say? Yes, I have them all in my castle library. And yet, I fear that none of them can help us. I have scored them for answers, but I fear my staff and I are doomed forever. Maybe I can break your curse. For some strange reason, I feel compelled to save you. You? What makes you so sure you can save us? She's a Mary Sue. The alicorn took a second look at Sparkel and noticed that she was indeed an alicorn too. Does your alicorn magic work in my castle? Well, no. But if your magic still works, maybe I can find the right spell and you can cast it. You are welcome to try, but I must ask you to stay away from the west wing of the castle. That's why I like to go to be brooding and mysterious. My candlestick and clock will show you to the library, little filly. You can call me Sparkel. And you can call me a beast, for that is what I am. Now, I will dramatically exit and leave you to your impossible task without helping you, even though clearly I have the magic to do so. <laughs> the prince said, igniting his broken horn with magic and disappearing from the room. Here we are, darling, Rarity Pot said, helping Flame Witch open the double doors that led to the vast castle library. It's... it's beautiful! I think I might cry! You must have hundreds, no, thousands of books here! There's so much knowledge to take in! How can you possibly stand it? Well, to be honest, half of us can't hold a book or turn pages now that we're objects. And the other half don't like to read. I'd say I'm a little bit of both myself. So, how are you going to break the curse? Uh, I need to know what the curse is before I can know how to undo it. It's written on an enchanted scroll. Vinyl said, from a new gramophone conveniently placed in the library. How many of these things do we have? And the better question is, why aren't they enchanted too? There's another plot hole. Wait, you know that we're, you know... In a story? Why, of course I do! I'm a male ripoff of Pinkie Pie, so I basically can do whatever she can! Don't know why you're fall for breaking, though. Maybe it's because you're like her 23rd cousin three times removed. It's a recessive trait. Uh, how can I get that scroll? Unfortunately, you can't. It's in the West Wing, and you're not allowed to go in there. But then, how am I going to be able to break it if I don't even know what it says? Hmm... I believe there is a book in here somewhere that has a copy of what's written on there. The prince is a deep and sensitive pony, so naturally he keeps a diary. Maybe we can just borrow it and the prince isn't looking. And risk upsetting the prince? Sweetener Belle, you know better than that. The poor dear is going through enough as it is. Alright, let's look for the diary. Would you all be so kind as to help me search? Sure thing, Sparkel, Flame Witch said with a smile, hopping into the library enthusiastically. Now hang on there, Flame Witch. You're a candle, and candles don't mix well with paper. You're overthinking things, Apple Clock. I can- Oh, wait, yep, uh, it's on fire. Rare Pop, can you, uh... I'm coming, I'm coming, Rarity Pot said, hopping after Flame Witch to dose the fire with her tea. Sparkel giggled <laughs> and began combing the bookshelves for the diary. Hours passed with no success for Sparkel and the castle objects. They weren't a very productive search party, as Flame Witch couldn't touch any books, Rare Teapot was afraid of spilling her tea on them, and Vinyl couldn't move at all. It's better than not speaking, Hasbro! And Sparkel frequently got sidetracked organizing the books by category and then alphabetizing them. 
Eventually, Sweetnabel decided it was time to take matters into her own hooves, so to speak, and slipped away from the library when No Pony was looking. She hopped along the castle corridors until she reached the West Wing. Being as quiet as she was able, Sweetnabel was able to enter the prince's room unnoticed. Once she was inside, she spied the prince laying dramatically on his bed. The diary that the others were searching for wasn't in the library at all, but instead hovering next to him while his magic jotted down his thoughts. For some reason, the prince felt compelled to speak his entry aloud, which provided the perfect cover for Sweetnabel to hop towards the enchanted scroll undetected. Dear diary, a beautiful mare entered the castle today, wanting to help me. I don't understand why she would ever want to help a strong, handsome, and overpowered stallion such as myself. I'm far too broken inside to be saved. These feelings remind me of when I was an infant, and my parents, King Sombra and Nightmare Moon, abandoned me, and the years I spent on the streets being ridiculed by my peers because I was so... different. Or that one time my horn was broken when I saved those sick orphans from the burning hospital. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is good stuff. Sweet Nabelle used the handle on her teacup to grasp onto the scroll and hopped back toward the door quietly. She hurried toward the library while the prince continued explaining his tragic backstory to himself. Sparkle! Sparkle! I got it! Where did you find that? Um, it's a long over-exaggerated story. Come on, let's read it! Sparkle smiled, choosing not to question the little teacup. She unrolled the scroll and squinted her eyes, finding it difficult to read the faded ink. What costs nothing but is worth everything? Weighs nothing but can last a lifetime. That one pony can't own, but two ponies can share? It's something you don't understand but desperately need. One's destiny is fulfilled when a correct answer is accomplished. Wait, this, this is a riddle, not a curse! You found it! Solving the riddle will break the curse, silly! But the prince has already checked all his riddles and answer books and tried all kinds of magic spells. Nothing. See, if the ink disappears completely, then we're all cursed forever, and it gets harder to read every year. So, do you know the answer? Ah, uh, well, I just need more time, you know, to narrow down my options. Uh, I can do this, no problem. <laughs> Where is it? The prince bellowed, his voice echoing throughout the castle. Sweet Nabelle gulped, and Sparkel stood motionless. Moments later, the beast appeared in a flash of light and a resounding boom. You! You took it! I asked you to stay away from the West Wing, and you went there anyway? You interrupted my private thoughts! Sparkel shot a glance to Sweet Nabelle, who smiled apologetically, before hiding behind Sparkel's hoof. Well, how am I supposed to break your curse unless I know what the scroll said? Uh, you could have asked. You were the one who didn't think ahead. Do you even want me to break this curse? You seem mighty content to be depressed and mope around your castle feeling sorry for yourself. I didn't tell you you had to break it. If you don't want to be here, then why don't you just go? Maybe I will. Fine. Fine. Sparkel's face was red from anger and embarrassment as she stomped her way towards the castle door. The objects protested, hopping along beside her, pleading for her to stay. If he doesn't want me here, then I won't stay, Sparkel said angrily. She pulled open the door and stormed outside. She had only taken a single step outdoors when the clouds overhead began to multiply and darken. Thunder and lightning were quick to follow, though there was no hint of rain. From somewhere in the distance, there could be heard a dark and sinister laugh that soon multiplied into three distinct voices. Sparkel panicked and ran from the castle toward the front gates. She was thwarted, however, by large dark crystals that sprung from the ground, blocking her exit. Sparkel quickly changed directions and fanned out her wings to fly over the wall instead. As she did so, the unmistakable buzz of hundreds of wings approached from the other side. She squeaked in surprise and ran in a new direction, finding it difficult to see anything when a thick black fog encompassed her. Help! She screamed, thrashing about in the darkness, her mind echoing with the unhinged laughter of the villains closing in. I can't see! They're coming! 
Spark Elle's screams were cut short when she felt a mighty footstep shake the earth. Even in the thick black fog, she could see a circle of magical energy formed between two massive horns. Spark Elle could see the prince standing atop the tallest castle tower. He was reared up on his hind legs, and his horn let out a blinding blast of light that pierced the darkness, threatening to encompass his castle. The three villain voices screamed in anger and agony as the prince's magic laid waste to them. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Are you saying that King Sombra, Queen Chrysalis, and Tyrek were all attacking the castle at the same time? That's what it says, yes. But why? Are we supposed to believe that they'll all just get along? Wouldn't it make more sense for Tyrek to steal their power? Or Sombra to turn them into mind slaves? Or- This is what happens in terrible fanfictions, Pinky. Inexplicable boss battles with familiar villains easily defeated by overpowered OC characters. So he's attracting all the terrible fanfiction tropes like, like some kind of giant cringe magnet? We have to get rid of him before Pinky Tails are doomed forever. I know just what to do. All right then. Spark Owl stood in shocked silence, witnessing the might of the prince's power. Once he had finished, he shot her an apologetic smile and disappeared from the tower momentarily to reappear in front of her. Are you all right? I'm fine. What was all that? Sometimes myself and my castle is put in incredible danger by outside dark forces, and I have to keep them at bay. Don't worry, they've never beaten me before. I'll make sure you're safe. But why? What could they want? They want me to turn to the dark side. Thank you for saving my life, Sparkel said, conceding to the fact that without the prince's help, she surely would have met her doom. You're welcome. It's not safe for you to travel right now. It's best if you storm off tomorrow when the daylight's on your side. Spark Elle smiled and nodded in agreement, following the prince back inside the castle. The following day, Spark Elle found that her determination to break the curse greatly outweighed her desire to leave the castle. The prince was overjoyed to learn that she wanted to stay and decided to assist her search rather than brood in his tower. The castle objects were all abuzz to see the two getting along, and each hoped the connection they were forming would bring them one step closer to breaking the curse. Minutes turned to hours, hours into days, and soon a week had gone by of fervent study together. Sparkel and the prince rarely left the library and each other's side. The prince quickly learned to accommodate Sparkel's tendency to work too hard by having his staff bring them meals and blankets at night when the studying poured into the cold early hours of the day. They talked. They laughed. They organized. And they made checklist after checklist to make sure they didn't miss a single detail, sharing ideas and clues with each other while keeping the end goal in sight. However, one week of study was the prince's limit, and he desired instead to do something else with Sparkel. He gathered the castle staff and enlisted their assistance to create a grand party. He wanted to thank Sparkel for her hard work and provide every pony a break from their toiling. Of course, the objects delighted at the opportunity to throw a party, none more so than Flame Witch, who took it upon himself to plan the celebration. Rarity Teapot whisked Sparkel away from the library to go and meet another castle object that would help to make her ready in time for the evening's festivities. Spark Elm was a little uncomfortable with the idea, as she had never attended a party before and didn't want to disappoint the prince or his castle objects. She'll need to look divine, darling. I told her that only you could pull off such a feat. But of course, every pony knows that the great and powerful Tresser has the most fashion-forward designs for any mare, even one as egghead as this one. Why does every pony call me that? What does it even mean? I'm a wardrobe, not a dictionary. You just look like one, that's all. That's all well and fine, but we simply must not waste any time. Have you found a dress for our guest? How about this one? I heard it was only worn once. (laughs) The tresser giggled slyly, holding out a gown that was anything but appealing. Oh my, that'll never do. It looks as if a bunch of mice sewed it together on a time crunch. No, 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 we need something that accentuates her smile, shows off the brilliance of her wings. I don't think I have anything that would make her look good. 
Perhaps I misspoke then. Perhaps you are not the greatest wardrobe in the castle. Come, Sparkel, we will visit another room and perhaps we will find something for you there. Wait! I just found something. Uh, yes! Have a look. It's beautiful! Try it on, Sparkel! Uh, are you sure I need this? Why can't I just wear my regular clothes? Regular what? How could you ever think to attend a gala without wearing a gorgeous gown? Because she's an egghead. Alright, I'll give it a try. But without my magic, it might take some time to get this on right. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Come see, Tressa said, beckoning Sparkel closer. Sparkel took the bait and approached Tressa. Moments later, she was sucked inside the wardrobe and the doors shut, locking her in. Her screams of protest matched the strange sounds coming from within. Before a minute had passed, the great and powerful Tressa spat Sparkel back out fully dressed and ready for the party. Ugh, now I smell like musty old books. Ugh. You look exquisite, Rare Teapot said, showing Sparkel a reflection of herself in a nearby mirror. Sparkel did indeed look ravishing in her gown. It was accentuated with pieces of jewellery and a stylized mane to match. You've really outdone yourself, great and powerful dresser. Naturally, I am the best. Ahem. A voice called from the other side of the door. The prince would like to inform the young filly that the celebration can now begin. Sparkel opened the door to see a hollowed suit of pony armor standing at attention on the other side. Oh, you look rather beautiful tonight, Miss Sparkel. Uh... Oh, thank you, uh... Flash. Flash armor. Flash replied, the metal helmet's cheeks turning a bright crimson. Your prince awaits, darling! Rarity Pot said, delighted, then turned to Flash armor. Why don't you go guard the magic mirrors, hmm? Of course, right away. Flash said, slightly defeated. Gotta be careful around the armor. They've been known to steal waifus. Sweetener Bell! Language! What? Language set. Come, we're holding up the party. Spark Owl followed Rarity Teapot and Sweetener Bell toward the grand dining hall, a room that she had never seen before. The hall was extravagantly lit with numerous chandeliers and candlesticks that vaguely reminded Spark Owl of Flame Witch. There was a long table filled to the brim with party food, including a massive 100 layer cake. The adjoining ballroom had streamers hanging from every pillar and wherever she looked there were sure to be dozens upon dozens of balloons. The prince waited for Sparkel at the end of the staircase, wearing a brightly coloured suit that matched the theme of the party. Sparkel blushed profusely, having completely overdressed for the occasion. She wondered if that was the great and powerful Tressa's intention, as she didn't seem particularly fond of Sparkel. You look lovely, said the prince, pulling out her chair at the dining table. And you look... Uh, this whole place looks, uh, bright and festive. I think the word you're looking for is fun, Flame Witch said, bursting out of the cake along with the other castle objects in a sea of confetti. Sparkel and the prince were soon up to their flanks in pieces of paper and the remnants of the food that had once been on the table. What? You? Oh, this place is a mess! But what's a party without a big surprise? Flame Witch said, scooping up a chunk of frosting and eating it in one bite. Mmm, cheese flavored. Ugh, I'll go get Apple Broom. Uh, that's okay. I wasn't really that hungry for cake. Sparkel said, brushing the frosting and confetti from her mane. How about a dance? I would love to, Sparkel said with a smile. She and the prince waded out of the chaos to the ballroom, where an expectant vinyl record was ready and waiting. Hit it! <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice. The entire room seemed to jump at the beat, including the prince and Sparkel. <laughs> the pair of them laughed, dancing out the rhythm together, flailing their hooves about in all directions. Unable to get Dashton's attention, Pinky made her way towards the gramophone and lifted the needle from the record. There! Now if you would be so kind, get this thing out of my story! Dashton? Who are these ponies? Look, 
gosh, Don! It's just like I said! A beast has stolen your mare and was dancing with her! Kind of. What are you gonna do about that? Why come join the party, of course! There's enough cheese confetti cake for every pony! Does that mean I can come to the party too? Nope, not you, Apple Broom! You get back to work! But Dashy! Uh, uh, Dash Dawn! Don't you want to defend your mare friend? Mare friend, please! She was barely even my friend! Friend? But I don't have any! Sparkhouse started, then paused. The answer hit her so directly that she felt foolish for not seeing it sooner. That's it! The way to break the curse! She ran towards the library where the enchanted scroll had been waiting. The prince, the castle objects, and the pony intruders followed after. Oh, alright then. I'll just chill here and not get to see what's so exciting. Yeah, that's fair. Sparkel reached the scroll and carefully unfurled it, scanning the riddle as a big smile grew on her face. What costs nothing, but is worth everything, weighs nothing but can last a lifetime, that one pony can't own, but two ponies can share, something you don't understand but desperately need, one's destiny is fulfilled when a correct answer is accomplished, that has to be it, friendship! Before I came to the castle, you only had your staff around you, ponies that would do anything for you regardless of how they felt, you didn't have a real friend, did you? I... I guess not. I never called any of my staff my friend. I always thought I was too likable and perfect to be a good friend. And that's the thing! The scroll said the answer had to be accomplished! That meant that you couldn't just know the answer! You had to experience it too! We've had the means to break this curse all along! You... you... you want to be my friend? I already am your friend. And you're mine too. Once the words had left her mouth, the entire castle began to glow. Magical waves of light struck each castle object at once, engulfing them until it was too bright to see them at all. When they reappeared moments later, their true pony forms had been restored, and Sparkel could see them all as they truly were for the very first time. You did it! You broke the curse! Hooey! Now that feels a mite better! Apple Clock said, bucking her hooves in the air, rejoicing. Hang on to your flanks, every pony. This light show isn't over yet! Flame Witch said, lounging in a chair with shades over his eyes, pointing his hoof at the prince. All eyes turned to the prince in confusion as the magic began engulfing him as well. Uh, but, but I thought he said he was only cursed not to leave the castle. His appearance was a curse. Just as with the castle staff, the magical light grew too blinding to watch and a final burst was heard before the prince emerged. His appearance had changed after all. He was without all the excess magic and vibrato he had grown accustomed to hiding behind. Instead, he became a proud and confident prince with actual characterization and personality. However, it wasn't a pony that stood before them now, but instead, a much smaller creature. A baby dragon. Excuse me? Spike? This whole time, the prince was Spike? I didn't think you'd want to get to know the real me if you saw me for who I am. But now that I know you're my friend, Sparkel, I... Wait, where'd the story go? Guys? Guys? No pony likes you, Spike! The end. Uh, well, that explains a lot. Hey, don't blame me. I tried to get him out of the story a long time ago. You're not going to let me off the hook for reading you a Spike story, are you? No. Uh -uh. Hmm. I know. How about we read The Little Mermaid again? 